Yo, it's Bogue. Welcome back to Kerbal Star Frontiers and KSP. Last time, we launched an interstellar spacecraft from a new launch site on the Mun, where we set out to explore a whole nother star system, the Red Dwarf Star Aethera, at two and a half Kerbal light years away. After multiple years in flight, we arrived and landed on the first planet in the system, Surther, a lava world, and the crew have since returned to the ISV in orbit, where they prepare to explore the next planet in the star system. And here we are in the KSS BOVA interstellar spacecraft in orbit around Surther. Today's target is the planet Vespin, which you can actually see in the sky right here. It's a super Venus type planet, so it's insanely hot and uh, has crazy pressures. Um, very cloudy, and uh, we're going to check it out today. So we're starting our burn to escape from the Surther sphere of influence, where we can plan our trajectory to intercept the Vespin system. Here we are coasting our way out of the Surther gravity well. Some crazy views of Aethera this close to the star, which is a red dwarf star, pretty cool. The entire system is kind of bathed in its reddish orangey glow because the star's light is primarily in that part of the color spectrum. So there's not as much color differences in this system, but it is very red. So we're about halfway through our inclination matching burn to line up our inclination with Vespin. And once we've got that settled, we can begin planning a prograde maneuver burn out to Vespin's orbit, which is above Surther in the uh, system. This entire star system is actually pretty small. Aethera itself is basically the size of a large gas giant. Red dwarf stars are the most common type of star in the galaxy, but are much smaller than the K or G type stars, like our own star and Kerbal in KSP. Looks like we've got our intercept ready to go with Vespin, although I have to tweak my trajectory through the system to get our periapsis at about the altitude that we want to be orbiting, which is, let's just keep it safe, about 100 kilometers above the surface. It has a pretty high atmosphere at 83,000 meters, so we're going to try to steer clear of that while we circularize. But now that we've got that set up, we can warp ahead a couple of days until we've entered the Vespin sphere of influence. Because this system is so small between the planets distance-wise, it only takes a couple of days in transit between the planets, which is nice. But here we are in the Vespin system. We've got eyes on it for the very first time, and it looks like a giant cloudy orange Venus. Who would have thought? I'm calling it a Super Venus because it's very similar to Venus, uh, but it has higher gravity than Kerbin and uh, an atmosphere 56 times thicker. So it's a real beast of a planet. Manned landings on this planet are probably close to impossible, although I don't know why we would want to. Down there, the pressures are so high that the atmosphere is basically behaving like a liquid at that point, and uh, the temperatures are insanely hot and the surface is basically a giant rocky hellscape. But we have a rover specially designed for this environment that we will be sending down through the clouds to explore the surface from afar, going where our Kerbals cannot. So here we are circularizing into a lower orbit around Vespin, just above the atmosphere at about 100 kilometers above the surface. One thing that our expeditionary crew of intrepid Kerbals, 15 of them to be exact, can do in the study of Vespin is observe the planet from orbit. So here we are in the observation canopy tower on the ventral side of the ship. Vespin's dense and cloudy atmosphere is home to dozens of electrical storms going on planet-wide, so you're going to be able to see some flashes of lightning from orbit, which is really cool. We'll be able to see that up close on the surface. All right, we're gonna get ready to deploy our atmospheric descent module that contains the rover for the surface. It's over attached or docked, I should say, to the lander section of the spacecraft. We're gonna use our RCS thrusters to push ourselves away from the main craft, flip over and do a small deorbit burn to lower our periapsis into the atmosphere of Vespin where we'll experience tremendous drag uh, during the reentry phase and that'll bring us to the ground hopefully in one piece.
we're starting to experience some intense re-entry heating. Our heat shield is going to take the brunt of the force, but we're going to see some of the heat shield chipping away, creating a really cool fireworks show, like a supersonic plasma sparkler. After a few minutes of that, we managed to burn off most of our speed and survive the re-entry. So now we're going to try to deploy our parachutes while we drift down through the clouds towards the surface. The atmosphere is really thick and really hot, so I don't know if these parachutes will survive, but the closer we get to the surface, the thicker the atmosphere gets and the more that the atmosphere itself will begin to behave almost like a liquid. So I'm wondering if these parachutes are going to survive but maybe the dense pressure at the surface will slow down our module enough to survive the fall. Our rover inside the descent module is held in suspension, so I think it'll survive, but we'll see if these parachutes hold up. Unfortunately, it looks like our parachutes were just lost to drag and heat forces. So as we plunge through the final cloud layer and enter this kind of sphere of lightning all around us, it uh, looks like we might be looking at a unscheduled disassembly, but I think as the atmosphere gets thicker down by the surface, like look, we're only falling at about 18 meters per second, and uh, our heat shield's probably gonna take the brunt of that impact, so we'll see if it survives. It looks like our rover is intact, actually. So that's excellent. Looks like the mission might not be a failure after all. It's still attached to its docking port, so we'll undock that and turn the rover on and see if its wheels still work. And it looks like it's fully operational, so we can begin our uh, joyride around the surface and begin our survey of the landscape that we have before us which appears to be like like a big sulfuric hell or something like that pretty pleasant for a rover but not so much for kerbals the surface scatter is pretty dense so we have to avoid these bigger rocks here as we travel down this hill towards a more flat area this is actually probably really similar to what Venus is like in real life. This is a great representation of that type of planet in Kerbal Space Program. I'll have to check in on the lighting, lightning though. I don't know if Venus in real life has that, but it's super awesome on Vespin to see these lightning strikes all around us with the thunder. And you know, in reality, this under this much pressure, 56 atmospheres of pressure, the sound of these thunderstorms would be like hearing a thunderstorm taking place under a couple hundred feet of water, which is crazy to think about. This whole planet's atmosphere is basically a giant boiling pot that could melt lead. So, pretty crazy. We're going to run our experiments. It looks like the temperature is 721 degrees Kelvin, and the gravity or surface acceleration is about 1.1 Gs. Fairly Kerbin-like, but more actually. The exact surface pressure is 4,448 kilopascals, which equates to about 645 pounds of pressure per square inch. And uh, you'd have to go about 1,500 feet underwater to experience this type of pressure. So imagine how much that would make your ears hurt. You'd have to blow your nose pretty hard to get rid of that headache. Okay, so we've reached the bottom of the hill. This is a much flatter area. We're going to light off some of the fireworks we brought with us. These will be the first fireworks ever on an interstellar world, if you don't count the antimatter engine on our main interstellar spacecraft. That's more of like a unknowable cosmic horror firework, but yeah, just gotta make sure that the anti-particles don't touch the regular particles when we're not uh, intending them to. But that's gonna be a mission success for today. This rover will continue to explore the planet while we go on to explore the other planets in the Aethera system in future episodes. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below to catch all of that and more. I'll see you guys next time.